Is living for God the only way? That's what we talk about today on this week's Hope Kids Online. to another episode of Hope Kids Online. We're so excited that you joined us today. Justin, what? Are you ready? Uh, For what? Well, it's a new series. That's awesome. Yeah, we're actually spending three weeks on the story of Noah. How? Well, it's more than his life is more than just a flood. Did you know that he was 600 years old when the flood happened? That's crazy. Yeah, it's it's he was he was an old dude. I couldn't imagine like trying to build a fort, build a gigantic boat at 600 years old. Yeah, that's just that's just crazy. I can barely imagine doing that now. Now that I think about it, but yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. For the next three weeks, and you'll find out how. For the next three, <laughs> six weeks, we're gonna talk. Th- not six, three. Six weeks would be crazy. Three weeks, we're gonna talk about Noah and uh, and his life and how he followed God. And this week, we're focusing on Noah pre-flood, before the flood, and we're gonna talk about how he followed God no matter what. Wow. Yeah, he chose to have that righteous life. And you know, when you ever think about Noah, they talk a lot about in preschool in preschool classes because there's lots of animals. And it got me thinking, what's your favorite animal? Mm. What is your favorite animal? I kind of like the liger. Mm, half lion, half tiger. And bigger than both. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. I think uh, if I was to think about my favorite animal, uh, I would go with the okapi. Yeah, that's the, the half zebra, half half giraffe. <laughs> that's that's the one I would go for. Have you ever seen a liger's paw? I've never seen a liger. I thought it was I thought it was made up until just a few minutes ago. <laughs> Their paws are like this. Oh my! They're like dinner plates. That's amazing. Hey, why don't you tell us what is your favorite animal in the comments? It could be something crazy like a liger or an okapi, or it could be like a penguin or. A dog. A platypus. A platypus. Those are fun. Anyway, so that's what's going on today. We've got a lot of great things planned. We'll be right back here in just a minute. Hey, folks. Rusty Nimrod here with a weather news bulletin. Now, I know that usually you'd be expecting me to give you some information about some nasty weather coming our way. But honestly, it's as sunny as a tropical vacation out there. Now, there's been some speculation and reports of some bad weather supposedly coming. But I am here to tell you that you can count on old Rusty. There's no chance that any of that is going to happen. No rain, no clouds, no precipitation of any kind. Just sun, sun, and more sun. Now, let's take a phone call from one of our viewers. Hi, you're on the air with Rusty Nimrod. Caller, are you there? Hello? Yes, you're on the air with the trusty weatherman, Rusty Nimrod. How are you? Oh, I'm on the air? Oh my. Rusty, I'm such a big fan. Oh, really? Well, in that case, I'm going to send you an autographed photo of me. So you can put it on your refrigerator, okay? What's your name? My name? It's Sasha. S-A-S-H-A. Well, Sasha, S-A-S-H-A. It's on its way. How can I help you today? Well, there's this neighbor of mine. His name is Noah. He's building this big old boat, and he's telling all of us it's going to rain and flood soon. Now, I know that your forecast says it's going to be sunny, So who do I believe? Well, Sasha, who do you think you should listen to? A trained meteorologist with over 15 years of experience or some crazy old man building a boat? Well, I understand, but he seems pretty confident. Oh, really? Well, I'm here to tell you that this Noah guy doesn't know what he's talking about. (laughs) Kill me. Well, Noah says that God 
told him it was going to rain. Hmm. Really? Well, Sasha, did God also tell him that there's a high pressure system moving in from the west, causing the humidity levels to be at all time lows and causing gale force winds to bring unprecedented levels of micronesium particles in line with the Galerkin approximation? Did God tell him that, huh, did he? Um, well, no, I don't think so. That's what I thought. Now, oh, hold on. Let me break in for a moment. It looks like we have one of our correspondents out in the field right now, and I believe we have a satellite feed. Uh, yes, we do. Okay, our very own Cindy Prescott is on location at Noah's Ark and is talking with one of Noah's sons. Take it away, Cindy. Thanks, Rusty. Well, I'm here with one of Noah's sons named Bacon. Where's Rusty? Oh, no, Ham. My name is Ham. <laughs> it's Ham? <sighs> Ham, H A, ah, uh, um. Whatever. Well, how does it feel to be named after a meat dish made from a pig? Huh? What? What? Never mind. Listen, Ham, what exactly are you, your two brothers, and your crazy dad doing? Why are you building this boat? Crazy? No, Papa's not crazy. I, I know that's what the locals are saying. He's a really godly man. Except uh, last night we were playing Yahtzee, and I was just, well, hang on, it's like, hey, JPEG, why are you putting an anchor on this boat? We're not gonna dock anywhere. This isn't the Pirates of the Caribbean. You see what I'm working with here? I mean, we had specific instructions on what to do, and this guy's going rogue on us. I'm so sorry, we'll, we'll get there. No problem. Now tell us exactly why are you and your brothers helping your father build this ark? Well, we have this saying, must be the money. <laughs> it's not, but uh, you know, uh, me and my brothers, uh, we, uh, we were like wondering what we we're gonna do today, and uh, God spoke to uh, Noah, uh, dad, uh, that's what we call him. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, he was like, hey, the world is not <laughs> and we're like, Yeah, I mean, have you been to Southside? Uh, we don't know what's going on, right? I mean, they're, they're, they're just crazy down there. And so, you know, the world has become an evil place. I mean, you have to uh, agree, agree with me. Will you agree with me on that? I would agree with that, yes. Yeah, well, you know, um, when God saw the naughtiness, it, 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 it made him sad. And so he said, hey guys, uh, build a, a boat or ark, a patent pending on that term. And uh, you know, we're waiting for the big water invasion is what we're calling it. Some sort of water invasion of water. And uh, oh, all the, all the animals are gonna come and, and we're gonna get on it. But um, yeah, there's gonna be animals. Animals? What animals? Well, there's birds right there, but yeah, I know your point. Uh, well, you know, God told us that he was going to send, um, wait, hang on, and cheese! That's my wife. How many animals? Okay, two. We're at two. We're going to get two of everyone that's going to jump on the boat, and they're going to come, they'll be safe with us. Okay, let me get this straight. Yeah. You're, you're telling me that out of everybody in this whole world, God chose your dad. Yeah, you know, my dad was the one righteous dude. And uh, I always saw him uh, praying and obeying God's commands. And, you know, even with all the naughtiness, you know, dad was righteous through it all. And, oh, that's what all the kids are gonna learn about today. <laughs> kids? What kids? Well, ah, ah, the kids in the camera, look, hey guys. Hey, it's him. <laughs> they're all in there, they're looking. See, you can feel their eyes. Yeah, they're gonna learn uh, their lesson today about what it means to live a righteous life in an evil world. Wink! All right. Well, it was nice to meet you, pork chop. Uh, no, ham, ham. Remember, we said earlier, we've been talking for 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm coming! Anyway, you heard it here, folks. Noah is building an ark for no reason. Meteorologist Rusty Nimrod reports, no clouds, no rain, no precipitation of any kind. No need to worry. This is Cindy Prescott reporting live from Noah's Ark. We'll see you later. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Potato Head Theater. Today's story is found in the book of Genesis, chapter six and seven. It is one of the most famous stories in the Bible, Noah and the Ark. Hi everybody, my name's Noah. But the truth is, Noah's story started long before the Ark was ever built. 
The story starts in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Listen to what the Bible says. Now the Lord observed the extent of the people's wickedness. He saw that all their thoughts were consistently and totally evil. All these people, they're so evil. Just look at all those people over there, how evil they are. Aha! I have a laser sword! Ha! And I yacht! You see what I mean? The world was filled with evil. God knew the people were evil. He saw the way they treated each other. He saw the way they hurt each other. And how do you think God felt about all this sin? These people are horrible. I know. It really, it makes me very sad how much they refuse to worship me and love one another. They're just so full of sin. This is not my plan. How did it make God feel that the people he had created had become sinful, evil people? Genesis 6.6 6 says it broke his heart. Sin makes God sad. <laughs> When we sin, we're not just breaking God's rules, we're breaking God's heart. God was so sad that his people had become so evil that he made a very strong decision. I'm gonna have to make a decision. I'm not gonna like it. I don't think anyone's gonna like it, but I think it's what needs to be done. He decided that he was going to destroy the whole world and everything in it. I'm just gonna just gonna have to destroy everything and kill everyone in it. Everything's just like picking up an edgy sketch and just give it a good shake. Wait, what? What are you gonna do? You, I don't know if I, I like this idea. It's hard to believe, isn't it? But that's how much God wanted things to change. He wanted evil gone from the world. He decided to send so much rain to the earth that it would flood the whole world and kill everything in it. Wow, that's, that's a lot of rain. Wait a minute, I can't swim! Now you're probably thinking, so what does this have to do with Noah? I'll tell you what it has to do. I think I'm gonna drown! You see, God searched the whole world looking for someone who was living for him. I've been looking everywhere. Noah, you serve me, you love me. I think I'm gonna save you. Yeah, you're right. I, I totally, I totally love you and, and, and I, I, I want to stay with you all the time. He looked over the whole world and only found one man who was living for God in this evil world. And you know who it was? It was me! It was me! I love God! Yeah, totally! God's gonna pick me! That's right, Noah. The Bible says that Noah was a blameless man. Because Noah was the only righteous man of his time, God called on Noah. He told Noah, I want you to build a boat. Noah, because I'm going to send all the rain, I need you to build me a boat. Um, yeah, uh, two things. One, uh, I don't know how, how to make a boat. Yeah, uh, two things. Don't know how to make a boat and uh, can't swim. I don't know if I'm the best person for this job. God had a plan for Noah and his family. Noah lived for God in a very wicked world, and because of that, God chose to save him from the flood. Noah, because you serve me, I'm gonna save you, your family, and no one else. Well, also all the other animals too. Wait, so you're gonna save my whole family? And then, then now I have to be a, built, a boat builder and a zookeeper? Great. All right, guys, thank you for joining us on another episode of Potato Head Theater. Thanks for joining us. I hope to see you next time. How many of you wish you could be at church all the time? I mean, think about how cool that would be. You could. 
you could play with all the stuff in the launch pad and like the carpet ball and the air hockey and the, all the video games. It, it's all there just for free. All your friends would be here and you could play with them all the time. You wouldn't have to go to school. You could just play with your, all your friends here. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? But here's the thing is that by being at church all the time, it's not the real world. It's not, you won't actually have the problems that you have when you're out in the world because almost everyone here at church, they're a Christian. They follow Jesus and they do what's right most of the time. But when you're out in the world, like when you go to school, you're surrounded by people who don't actually follow Jesus. They don't know the difference between right and wrong and, and they're, they're talking, they're, they're talking about m bad movies or bad TV shows they watch or, or they're talking about bullying or, or you hear words that you know is wrong. You hear all these things going on at school and it can be tougher to follow Jesus. But what we know is that if we're supposed to follow God, if we're going to follow God, then we need to do what's right. That's what Noah did when God looked out over the entire world and he was looking at all of humanity and trying to find one person that would follow him. He found one in Noah. Noah stood out from the rest because he did what was right. And he didn't do it because that was what he was supposed to do. He didn't do it because that he was a rule follower. He did it because of his relationship with God. He loved God and he wanted to do things that pleased God, not because he was afraid that God would do something against him, but because he loved him. And so we need to do the same thing, not because we're supposed to, not because we need to follow a certain amount of rules or not even because our parents or our small group leaders, or our teachers or coaches tell us to, but because of our relationship with God. If we say that we love him, if we say that we follow him, then we're going to do whatever we can to please him. And so what we have to do is we have to do what's right. But how do we define what is right? What, how do we know what's right? Well, Jesus actually said, he, he gave us the two greatest commandments. He said, he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And it was like, great, let's love him. But how do we love him? Well, that's the second one, love your neighbor as yourself. Love the people around you. Love everyone as yourself. Do what's right. And so if you're faced with the question of like, what's right and what's wrong? Ask yourself, is what I'm about to do show love to others or does it sure show hate? Is what I'm about to do about to hurt someone or is it about to show, or is it about to show love to someone? That's the filter that we should make all of our decisions through. Does this love show love to God or show, and show love to others? You see, if we live our lives like that, we will let others see the difference in our life. If someone is making fun of you and you don't fight back, you're gonna look different. If someone is challenging you to do something wrong in, in school and you choose not to, people are gonna look at you different. If you, if, if you live your life differently, if you always do what's right, people will see what you're doing. And if they don't always do what's right, even when, even when things are tough, they're going to ask questions and they're going to wonder how in the world, why do you live that way? Why do you always do what's right? And we can tell them simply, it's because I love God and I've chosen to follow Jesus. And that's what Jesus would do. Love you like I would love myself. And so even though we live in a sinful world, we should be the light. We are the light to the world. That's what Jesus said. He said, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. We shine bright to everyone. If you ever heard the phrase, it says, the darker the night, the brighter the light. You see, the world is shrouded in darkness like this. And now you can't see me. And without Christians in the world, without people who follow Jesus, the world is like this. It's completely dark. But when you decide to follow Jesus and you decide to do what's right, it's like this light that shines up all of a sudden I 
and bright and you can see my face and you can see how you can see where to go and what to do because I am shining bright. We're going to bring the lights back up now. You see in a dark room when the light comes on, everyone naturally turns towards the light. It's the way that God designed us and we are the light of the world. So how do we make sure that we always do what's right? Well, it's simple. We have to stay close to God. You see, God wants us to have a relationship with Him. It's not, if we say we believe in Him, that's awesome. But what we also need to do is we need to follow Him. We need to have a relationship with God. But how do we have a relationship with a God that we can't see, we can't hear, we can't feel, we can't smell, we can't taste, we can't touch? How, does, how do we do that? Well, there's actually several ways that the Bible actually lays out for us to have a relationship with Him. The first way is to pray. That's what Noah did when he was listening to God. And that's what Jesus did when he talked to God, his father all the time, is he prayed. He actually taught every one of us how to pray. He gave us words in Matthew chapter six of here's how you should pray. And so when we t spend time and talk to God, when we, that's what prayer is. When we spend time and talk with God, we get to know who he is and what he's about and what he wants us, what he would like for us to do, how we can actually show love to other people. Now, the trick is, is that when we pray, we can't just pray just over meals or maybe for a few seconds here at church or we have to pray all the time. If we say we want to be friends with Jesus, we want to follow him, then we need to talk to him more than just once a week or more than just once on in, front, in front of a meal just for a few seconds. That person's never going to be a friend. But if we spend time with them, we spend consistent time every single day, every opportunity we have to talk to them, just like you do with your friends, we will stay close to God. Another way that we can stay close to God is by reading his word, the Bible. If we use the, if we read God's word, the Bible, it tells us about who God is and what he did. That's where we got our story of Noah today, is we learned how God's heart was broken because of all the people that were sinning against him. How do we know that God is not necessarily angry at us because of our sin, but he's hurt? Well, we know it from reading stories like the story of Noah, Noah in Genesis chapter six. You see, when we read the Bible, we learn who God is and his great rescue plan to save the entire world through his son, Jesus. We learn all of that through reading the Bible. Lastly, you can stay close to God by worshiping him. When we sing a song like we're gonna sing here in just a few minutes, it's not just to sing a song and to show off how well we can carry a tune or our great dance moves, no. When we worship God, it's to tell Him how we feel about Him. It's for us to express our emotions. It's for us to tell God like that and tell God how we feel and that we love Him and that we worship Him. But it's, it's sometimes songs even speak to us. It's like God speaking to us. And so when we spend time in worship to God and sing by singing or in prayer or by serving someone else, by worshiping him, we stay close to God. We come closer to doing what is right because we have the heart of God. And if we have the heart of God, then we will stand out. We will make a difference. And maybe even someday God will look at us and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You see, Jesus, God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for you on the cross. He wants to have a relationship with you. He is your loving father. It broke his heart to see all those people turning against him and it breaks his heart still today. And so we have to make the decision to turn and to follow him, even after we may have decided to believe in him. So let's pray. And let's pray that God will help us to follow him. God, thank you so much for giving us this example of Noah in the Bible. That, that how he, in a dark and world where everyone turned against you, he decided to stay blameless and follow you with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength. That he loved you with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength. And he even loved his neighbors as he loved himself. God, I pray that we follow Noah's examples and more specifically, that we follow Jesus' example. 
And as we grow and come closer to you, God, that we remember to pray, to read our Bibles and to worship you so that we will do what's right, so that we can stand out. And we have an opportunity to tell more people about what you did by giving your son to die for us on the cross. We thank you for all these things. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, we just talked about worshiping God and we want to worship him because of what he did, what he did by sending his son Jesus to die for us on the cross. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to worship him and sing a song called You're the Reason. And what it says is Jesus is the reason why we sing, why we dance. He's the reason why we worship. He's the reason why we celebrate. Why? Because he saved us. Let's sing this together. You're the reason. reason why my feet can't stop my heart can't help but sing it's a wonderful feeling to feel your love for me to feel the joy you bring your love is the answer so I sing to you the reason is you Jesus Set me free And I'm thankful that you love me Whoa. you're joining us on this week's Hope Kids Online. You know, I really love the story of Noah. Yeah, I do too. The, and really, if you like read it in the Bible, there's a lot of like crazy uh, in intricacies to the story, little lot details. Of, little nuance and details yeah. that you did. We just kind of don't get with Potato Head Theater. No, we don't get with Potato Head Theater. And really, you don't get in all the stories we learned in preschool with the cute little animals sitting inside the boat and all that stuff. But, you know, one thing that Noah did is he gave us an example of how to live for God even when everyone else around him totally didn't live for God. 
Oh. Hey, we want to let you know that Vacation Bible School is coming up. It is in less than a month away. Oh my God. Yeah. Less than a month away. You're going to want to go ahead and register and sign up because here's the thing. If you go ahead and sign up now, you will actually have an opportunity to save some money on our official VBS t-shirt. Yeah. We're going to have an official VBS t-shirt for the, all the volunteers and for the kids. And so you're going to want to go ahead and do that. You can find out all the information about Vacation Bible School at www.churchofhope.com slash VBS. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this week's Hope Kids Online. Make sure to like, follow, or subscribe, and you can get all the information about Vacation Bible School or everything else that's going on here at, kids, uh, here at Hope Kids at churchofhope.com slash kids. We'll see you next week. Bye.